Chapter 16 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 16 The moon's white disk rose slowly above the horizon. The brightness of the sun pales the virgin of the heavens, as the warrior's love blanches the wife's cheek. Já si, our mother! exclaimed the Tabajara warriors, and brandishing their bows, they chanted the song of the new moon, discharging at her showers of arrows. Thou art come into the heavens, O mother of the braves! Thou turnest thy face once more to behold thy sons. Thou bringest waters to fill the rivers, and pulp to the caju nut. Thou art come, O bride of the sun, Thy daughters, the virgins of the earth, smile at thy approach. May thy soft light bring love into the hearts of the brave, and make fruitful the young mother's bosom. The evening was falling. The women and children sported in the vast Okara. The youths, who had not yet won their name by notable deeds, were running races in the valley. The warriors followed Irapuã to the sacred wood, where the pajé and his daughter awaited them for the mysteries of the jurema. Iracema had already lit the fires of joy. Araquém remained statue-like and ecstatic in the center of a cloud of smoke. Each warrior, on arriving, placed at his feet an offering for Tupin. One brought the succulent game, another water-flower, a third piracém of the traíra, and so on, each in turn. The old pajé, for whom were the gifts, received them with disdain. When all had taken seat round the great fire, the priest of Tupin commanded silence by a gesture, and three times pronounced aloud the dread name, as though to fill himself with the god who inspired him. Tupin! 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 Three times the distant echoes answered the name. Iracema came with the Igasaba full of the green liquor. Araquém decreed to each warrior his dreams, and distributed the wine of the Jurema, which was to transport the Tabajara brave to the happy land. The mighty hunter dreamed that stags and pacas ran to meet his arrows and transfix themselves. At length, tired of wounding them, he dug the boucan in the earth, and roasted so much game that a thousand warriors could not finish it in a year. The conqueror of hearts dreamt that the most beautiful of the Tabajara virgins left their father's wigwams to follow him, slaves to his will and pleasure. Never had the hammock of any chief witness the reality of such wild, warm visions. The hero's vision was of tremendous struggles and fearful combats, whence he always issued victorious and covered with fame and glory. The old man saw his youth renewed in his numerous offspring, like a dry trunk acquiring new strength and sap, and still sprouting into buds and flowers. All felt such lively, such lasting happiness, that in one night they lived many moons. Their lips murmured, their gestures spoke, and the pajé, who saw and heard all, gathered from their unveiled souls their most secret thoughts. When Iracema had offered to each brave the wine of Tupin, she left the wood. The rites did not permit her to be present at the sleep of the warriors, nor hear and see their dreams. She went her way straight to the cabin, where Martin awaited her. Let the white warrior take up his arms. It is time to go. Lead me to my brother, Pochi. The bride went straight for the valley, the Christian following her. They reached the rock base which fell sloping with clumps of foliage upon the margin of the lake. Let the stranger call his brother. 
Martin imitated the cry of the seagull. The stone which closed the entrance of the grotto fell, and the figure of Pochi the Brave appeared in the gloom. The two brothers pressed forehead to forehead and breast to breast, showing that they had but one heart. Pochi is happy because he sees his brother, whom the bad spirit of the forest had borne away from his sight. Happy is the brave who has a friend at his side like the valiant Pochi. All the other warriors will envy him. Dasima sighed, thinking that the affection of the Pichiguara sufficed to the happiness of the stranger. The Tabajara braves sleep. The daughter of Arakin will guide the strangers. The bride led the way. The two warriors followed behind. When they had gone about the distance of a heron's flight, the Pichiguara chief began to be uneasy and whispered in the ear of the Christian, My brother had better send the daughter of the Pajé back to the wigwam of her father. The warriors could march quicker without her. Martin felt a sudden sadness, but the voice of prudence and friendship prevailed in his heart. He advanced to Iracema and spoke softly to soothe her sorrow. The deeper the root in the earth, the harder it is to withdraw the plant. Each step Iracema takes on the road of farewell is a root which she plants in the heart of her guest. Iracema would accompany him as far as the borders of the Tabajara land, in order to return with more calmness in her breast. Martin did not answer. They continued their march, and as they walked, the night fell, the stars paled, and finally the freshness of dawn gladdened the forest. The morning clouds, purely white as cotton, appeared in the heavens. Pochi looked at the forest and stopped. Martin understood and said to Iracema, Thy guest no longer treads on the lands of the Tabajaras. It is the right moment to bid him farewell. End of chapter 16